Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nana Ajwa Frimpong. I am a filmmaker. And I'm also a student at uh, USC School of Cinematic Arts, completing my MFA in film production. And I will also be moderating today's conversation. So um, without further ado, I would love to introduce our wonderful panelists and the people who are responsible for bringing us the film that we just saw. Hello, so happy to be in conversation with you. Um, so let's get started because I know that people have questions and I have questions for you. So um, I wanna start by first acknowledging um, the tragic passing of Lucy Harris, Miss Harris, a, a little bit over a week ago. Um, and to kind of just orient our conversation and begin, I'd love to start with you, Crystal. Um, we know, we're so fortunate to, to now know the legacy of um, Miss Harris, but I'd love for you to speak about who Lucy Harris was as a mother to you, who you knew. So, uh, so first of all, thank you guys for allowing me to participate um, in this today. Um, my mom was an incredible person. Um, she had the ability to make you feel like you were the only person who mattered to her at that time. And so just everyone that I spoke to has just had such a high regard for her and her impact on their life, um, whether it was through athletics, as an educator. But for me as a daughter, like I just always looked up to her. Um, when, when you listen to her story, there are uh, several different instances where she always chose family. And so a lot of people always talk about, you know, when she was drafted by the NBA, she chose her family. Well, there were times later in life where she had the opportunity to go and coach with the, I think it was the Utah Stars, and she turned them down because she wanted to raise her daughters. And so for me as a mother, that's the type of mother that I want to be for my children. And it's all because of her. Yeah. And just before we got on um, or before everybody joined us, you were speaking about like learning your mother's history as you go and being surprised. Can you share a little bit more about that? Like things that you've learned and growing up, did you even know that she was like this amazing greatest of all time athlete? So we had a, we had a few, I guess, inclinations of like who she was, but not to the extent I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but I wore Shaq's number in high school and not even my own mother's, but it's just because, you know, because I mean, that's, that's, that's who I wanted to be like. And so when I got older, I was like, man, I should have been like my mama, <laughs> you know, she, she was right there, but we knew, like we, we heard a few things, but I think now with social media, like the information is so much uh, readily available. And so you're able to see like, you know, old clips and you're able to see like all these things that we we never saw. And so I, I accompanied her um, to several different events, but it just didn't hit me until like Ben started putting the pieces together. And so it's just been incredible. I'll give you an example. You asked about a recent example. Um, so they had an Omega Omega ceremony for her because she was a member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. And um, in the ceremony, they mentioned that she was a charter member. And so I'm on the call like, what? Like I had no clue that she broke so many barriers at Delta State outside of athletics. You know, she was a homecoming queen. And so it's just amazing to hear you know, the impact that she had, not just in athletics, but in education and social organizations and just different ventures like that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, her legacy lives on. So um, next, Shaq, I would love to bring you to the conversation because I've heard you speak about this story about Lucy and specifically and say that this film has to be required viewing for all Americans. Um, and we have to remember her name. And just this weekend, you rented out multiple theaters in LA for people to go and see uh, Lucy's story, experience Lucy's story in person. Can you talk about what made you want to come on to the project? Mute, Shaq, you're muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, I was saying that <clears throat> this, the, the queen of basketball, I think it fills a huge gap in the history of basketball by, you know, finally letting uh, the lovely Mr. Lucy Harris tell her own story. I think it's a story that we all need to think about because uh, she was a great talent. And, you know, she was denied the opportunity, uh, you know, to have a fulfilling and enriching career because she was a woman. 
And, you know, this is 2022 is the 50th anniversary of the signing of Title IX, which has gone a long way in ending discrimination. So the question is, who else are we, you know, keeping at bay? I like to consider myself a basketball aficionado. So when Ben brought the project to me, I was like, I've never heard this before. And I was very, very interested in she was just, you know, phenomenal. She, you know, she scored the first basket in women Olympics history in 76. I didn't know that. She was the first female drafted by the Utah Jazz. I didn't know that. She turned it down, you know, to raise her daughters. This was just a phenomenal, phenomenal story. And I got the call last week about her passing. And it saddened me because after Kobe and my sister passed away, I broke one of my rules. I said to myself that, when I want to do something or see somebody or reach out to somebody, I'm going to do it every day. And I talked to her and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come see you, you know, after this and after this. And I didn't even get a chance to hug her and kiss her on the hand and kiss her on the cheek and tell her I'm sorry. So it just, you know, kind of hurts me. So to everybody out there watching, if you want to call somebody and say you love them or you miss them or you just want to see them, do not wait till the next day. As soon as it comes to your mind, make sure you handle it. And it kind of sad me that I didn't even get to, Touch the beautiful uh, Lucy Harris. Thank you for that reminder. Um, and in your comments, you also mentioned kind of the bigger questions that the film poses. And I mean, one of those questions is who gets to be remembered and why? And, and the film also unearths the sad realities as to why that is the case. But when I was watching the film, what I always noticed in every viewing is that it's also a love story about a woman's joy. And I think that there's such a power to seeing a black woman with joy, who is generous, who loves her family. And so um, Ben and Stephanie, I'd love for you two to speak about the editing process and kind of shaping this story down to 20 plus minutes. You know, what were the essential elements that you felt like we had to include to tell a full story? Yeah, th thanks. That's a, that's a, Tough question because it took us a long time to figure it out. Um, but just on the point of joy, I think it's hard to watch the film and not uh, fall in love with Lucy's laugh. Um, and it was, you know, there was some tough things to talk about going over Miss Harris's life. And you kind of knew everything was okay when she would give you that little laugh. Um, and we tried to get as much of the facts in about, you know, what her story was as she told it to us. But we also wanted to show that magnetic uh, personality. And we wanted to show how much she loved the game. And that was a lot of, uh, you know, the time that Stephanie and I spent in the edit. Stephanie, you, you, you can remember some more of the specifics, but I remember kind of trying to balance that between plot and showing Lucy's amazing personality. And I also think people, you know, they, they need to know and understand the story, especially us athletes. I've had a phenomenal career and I've made a lot, a lot of money, not because of what I did, because of what, you know, Miss Harris did, Bill Russell, Will Tramlin, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, those, you know, that paved the way and those that were great before. So the fact that Ben brought this story to life, Ben, I want to say thank you because I had no idea. And I think uh, all female professional athletes should, should look at this and really, you know, uh, reach out to her family and you know, say thank you. Because if it wasn't for people like that, it would definitely be no us. Stephanie, did you want to add anything? Yeah, Nana, the way you described um, what you said about uh, Joy and this love letter, that, that definitely was running through my mind throughout because like Ben said, we see uh, Lucy light up throughout the film and most of the time that's when she's talking about basketball and her family so to really center those moments really bring in the game and her family I think was was really important um and just her ability to recall everything about those games um was also something that I think we we wanted to make sure we we showcase that as well yeah and I also want to shout you all out for uh, making room for a conversation about mental health um, when when Lucy speaks about that and how that really came to the forefront after she stopped playing, I thought that was a really um, wonderful thing to add in addition to her already powerful story. Um, Lindsay, for you, I've heard you speak about this film and you, you say that, you know, women are on the tails of a system that is built for and by men. And what this film is able to do is it shows a moment where women's sports was ascendant 
And so for you at the New York Times, what was it about Lucy's story, Ben, the collaboration in general that made you feel like it was the perfect place um, for the New York Times? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and thanks so much for that great question. And thanks to everyone um, for this um, for this amazing conversation. So I think what appealed to me initially was sort of a project that Ben and I were on, which was, as, as I think you brought up in this conversation, kind of looking for people who were on the cusp of making history and then um, and then we're not remembering them for whatever reason. Um, they fell just short um, or they walked away. They quit and said, I've had enough. Um, and about how much so much so much of our history is about people that you know never give up. And I was really interested in kind of hearing stories from people that did things a little differently and kind of recognizing those those accomplishments as well. And um, and seeing their stories told in a way that um, that celebrates what they did as well as sort of like the victor, like the most important person in history. Um, because so often history is subjective. It's written by certain people who are looking for certain things. And I think that's what's so exciting about Lucy's story is that it was different. Um, so, I mean, obviously one part of what stood out to, to us was her story alone. I mean, the daughter of sharecroppers, the only black player on a college team, she led to three national championships. The first woman to score a basket in the, Olympi in the Olympics. So good that she was drafted by the NBA. I mean, this is extraordinary um, stuff and especially representing the New York Times. This is something that we need as part of the record. Um, so just incorporating this as a, as a documentary into our report um, was, was a no brainer here. Um, but I think the other part of this story or of this film that's so special to me is how Ben and the team told it. I mean, it's first of all, a, a beautiful interview um, directly. Lucy is telling her own story. Um, that is very important here. Um, and then the other missing piece in her story that they did such a great job of, of, of um, of showing was the archival. They put us there in the Coliseum when she is winning. Um, we are there with her as she is um, on her journey to glory, to athletic glory. Um, and they are basically recreating that history for us so that we're living along with her um, and kind of sharing in her um, in her achievements. And so it, it was the, a combination of the incredible story, but also this amazing storytelling style and um, all of the historical records that, that Ben and his team really unearthed. Um, to, to bring her story to life. So such an opportunity to present it to our audience and, um, and the reaction has just been extraordinary. Thank you for that. Um, there are, I mean, she, there's, there's so much described about Lucy in the film and um, at the end or close to the end, you have various players that played with Lucy speak to what made her so great. And they speak about her craft, but they also speak about her character. And so um, for all of you, anyone can jump in. What were the qualities that you all, in watching, this, watching the film or knowing Lucy personally, what were the qualities that you related to or felt like reminiscent of your own approach to, to life? Was there anything that connected, any quality of Lucy that connected to you specifically? The only thing that connected, well not the only thing, was many things that connected, but her smile reminds me of the great Dr. Lucille O'Neill, which happens to be my mother. And when a mother smiles, no matter what's going on, it gives you the feeling that everything will be all right, no matter what. And her smile, her voice, she was just so humble. She was just so nice. And then you find out in her real life, she was most one of the most dominant women in sports history. And again, I was kind of, I don't want to use the word upset. I was kind of, I was kind of amazed that I've never heard this story before. And I'm reading and, you know, uh, some of the comments, you know, from the fans, they, they, they still feel like, and I agree with them, they still feel like it's an uphill battle when it comes to recognition of, of women. And I agree. But I think now and moving in the future is the best time to get this information out. Because when I was in high school and, and even in college, there's only a couple of media outlets and a couple of powerful sports outlets that you can get this information out. Now this information will be out and it will be out forever and it can get out quickly. Uh, when I was brought the project, you know, from, from Ben, I looked at it and I was like, I mean, that's all I could say. I was like, what? I'm one of the most dominant guys in history and I've never heard of Miss Lucy Harris, but what's going on? And then I had to watch it again. Then I finally called Ben. I said, Ben, is, is this real? I'm like, yeah, Shaq, it's real. Then you find all the stuff that she had to go through. You know, women 
have to persevere more than any other being on this planet. You do. You have to go through so many things and it should have stopped 20 years ago, but we, we must make it stop now. Like when I go to the sports stores, I'm kind of amazed that there aren't a lot of female memorabilia such as the males. And you know, you females, I, I'm, I'm going to go on the record and say females play harder than males. They do. I'm going to just say it. You know, I, I think the, the women from the WNBA should be making at least 50% of what the males make. You know, there's no reason why certain guys that are not worth it are making $40 million and then you got the girls making 700000 That's not right. Something needs to be done about that. But to answer your question, her smile just mounted me and it made me made me think of my my, my mother, who, who also was a was was really dedicated to her family. My mother, my mother always tells the story about how she chose to focus on me and the family. And then when I made it big, she came in the room and said, Baby, I, I gave up school and I gave up college for you. Can I borrow some money? to go back to school. So I told her yes, of course, and my mother went and got her bachelor's, her master's, and her doctorate. So, you know, the way that Miss Lucy invested in her family, I haven't met her family, but, you know, I talked to them on FaceTime. I talked to my uh, big man, Eddie, who reminds me of myself. They were so nice and they were so humble. And just by watching the film and just by talking to the children, you could tell that she was a mom's mom first. Like me, I'm a dad, dad first. Like, I don't really care about all the things I'm doing. I'm a dad, dad first. And, you know, you said that uh, you wanted to you wanted to wear my jersey. Well, my kids wear Kobe's jersey. <laughs> like, they, they look up to Kobe and Durant and those guys, and they just see me as dad. So, uh, again, thank you for sharing your beautiful mother with the world. And, Ben, thank you for adding me on to, to uh, this project. I appreciate it. I, I can't tell you how much we we appreciate. We all appreciate. You know, we 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 made this movie just a small handful of us. And I I think I can speak for everybody to say that like our partnership and, and your help and getting the word out has been game changing. And we couldn't do it without you. And I'm just so happy that we have this collective of people together, um, who especially in light of where we are right now, between um Lucy's passing and and really a, a, a formal memorial to be all collected in a in a um, an undertaking to be caretakers of her story and and take it to the next uh, chapter and bring it to the world. It, it, you know, one thing it reminded me of is my grandmother um, was born in the Netherlands and she was part of the Dutch resistance, um, and. She never told us anything. We just knew the littlest bit. And I never, she never told me the stories while she was alive. And after she passed away, I found out all these stories about, you know, breaking in and stealing ration stamps and helping the Dutch resistance during Second World War. And I just, I don't know, there was something that just kicked in in my gut when I started hearing more and more about Lucy's story that it just needed, it needed to be preserved and digitized and I needed to bring whatever I could from a craft perspective to help get the story out there. And, you know, Lucy just did such a great job and she just had a perfect memory of everything, which was, which is crazy. I mean, I interview people all day. She had, she could remember the score. I see Crystal nodding her head. Yes. She could remember every detail. And this is things happened 50 years ago and she was giving me every last thing. She was as good as storytelling as, as, as anything. And then to find this trove of film and tape and visual material that was sitting in boxes in the back corner of this archive for the last 50 years that just flickered to life the entire story right down to, you know, Lucy's memories of the, of the nuns beating on buckets, which made no sense to me when she told that to me. But then I'm reviewing the film and there, there are the nuns beating on buckets, distracting her. And... Um, it's just one of those special intersections of an incredibly unique, special American story and one that needs to be really shouted from the mountaintops because Lucy was just a singular, a singular person. And she, even after her passing, has brought us all together and everybody who's seeing the film bring us all together to, to hear her story and to make sure that it's not forgotten for the next generation. And when I watched it, I was kind of upset with you, Ben. I was like, is that it? 
Is that I, I was looking? Is it part two, part three? It gave me this gave me the same sensation of a Rocky movie. Like I haven't, I just I, I don't know what it was, but it's just like I felt like they're hurt, and it was just so inspirational. And people need to look at this, especially the young females. They, they, like they, like everybody needs needs to know the story. But I was upset that, like I had to like like Donnie, is it? Did you send the whole thing? Is is you know is this like a preview? It has to be more. But you know you did a a, a perfect job of narrating that and you know breaking it down to twenty two minutes. But I me me being the movie buff that I am, I would have liked to have an hour and a half myself. I'm just saying. Let's go. I'm available. Let's do it. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, when we when we um, watched the film at the festival, like we were all in tears because, you know, normally when you when you see a documentary, it's someone else like trying to tell somebody else's story. And so to hear her voice, you know, to hear her tell her story was just so special to us because now it's something that we have of her, you know. Now that she's not here, you know, so it was just so special to hear her tell her story in her own voice. Crystal, thank you for sharing. And I actually wanted to bring up the Tribeca Film Festival because I know that that was um, an experience where Lucy was there, family and friends were there. Um, so if Ben and Stephanie, I know that you two were there. Um, if you could just speak to, and Crystal, you're more than welcome to speak to kind of that experience of getting to experience that film in, in that venue with her. Yeah, that is a very emotional memory. Um, Crystal was there, Shaq was there in spirit, Stephanie and Lindsay, we were all there. And, um, Lucy didn't want to see the movie before. <laughs> and that's like basic documentary filmmaker one-on-one. -on -one. Before anybody sees the movie, you want your storyteller to watch it and let you know if they, they are good with it. And Lucy said, no, I, I, want to, I want to wait and see it at the premiere. So I was on pins and needles. I think we all were on pins and needles to see what would she think. And this was outside. Uh, they had a huge screen at Tribeca at Hudson Yards. And we were all there as a huge audience. And Crystal was there. Christina was there. Chris, three of Lucy's kids. And the film played. And uh, I sat just behind Lucy. And I saw her enjoying it. And I saw, I saw the tears. And I had tears. And I think there was a really impactful moment. The film was in a program of many short films and in the middle of the program at the end of it, and everybody knew that Lucy was there. They stood up and they gave a standing, standing ovation in the middle of the program for Lucy. And she turned her head and she saw it. And uh, that's just, we had dinner after it's a, that, that would have been, good enough for me. Um, and so everything, everything since then has just been wonderful, but I've been replaying, I don't know about you, Crystal or, or Stephanie or Lindsay, but I, I've been replaying that uh, Tribeca premiere over and over in my head over the last 10 days. Yeah, and there definitely. were also- oh, Go ahead, Stephanie. Go ahead, no, no, go ahead. I was, was going to say definitely. And there, there were so many, you know, there were moments where we laughed. There were moments where we cried. There were moments where we were like, oh, I've never seen that picture. And so it was it was special to us too, um, to see her, see herself on the big screen again. Yeah, I was just going to add, I mean, I that was my first time meeting her. And, you know, I, I'd been sitting with that footage for weeks and weeks. So I became... A pretty big fan. I was kind of starstruck, honestly. I like I wanted to talk to her even more, but I just was kind of like, oh, you know, she was she became so big to me, um, like being able to watch so much of her life in the footage. Um, but I remember at that screening, there were other sports short docs in that block. And I remember those filmmakers and those protagonists talking to her and giving her her flowers too for just the like the trailblazing that she did that um, impacted 
totally different sports, you know. We have a question from somebody in the audience, Ole Mika, who asks, do you see her legacy as being remembered as a good person as well as an extraordinary athlete? Um, yeah, I guess the question, yeah, her question of legacy and what you see that as being. The answer is yes. The answer is hell yes. I'm, I'm also looking at the comments and the line that she said, I was not friends with anyone on the team, but on the court, you could not tell. That is a strong comment. And, you know, when you're in sports, it's never about you, it's about the team. She did what she had to do, which was dominate. And she also made great plays, which, which brought them to all those national championships. And, you know, sports is the only thing that, sports and music, and when, all, when outside things are going on, when you get in that little space, everything is forgotten. Everything is forgotten. And I wish the world could take what we learn from sports and music and, you know, incorporate that into the world because look, I'm 50, I'll be 50. I don't believe we're still talking about sexism, misogyny, and racism. And like, really? Like that was 1940s, 50s, and this is still 2022. We still have a long way to go. So, you know, I was always taught respect. And you could tell that everyone respected this woman. And you could tell that her family respects her. They, 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 they love her. So, again, Ben, I can't thank you enough. I'm so happy that I was taught this information at the age of 48, 49. And I can't wait to show my daughters. I have a couple of daughters that play basketball. And, you know, we live a good life because of, of pioneers like Ms. Harris, uh, Ms. Harris. So her legacy will always go on because social media. And if I got anything to do with it with my 100 million followers, we're going to have a Lucy Harris Day every, every, every year. And, you know, we could tweet something out every year, just, you know, put the information in people's hands because I'm, I'm glad the information came upon my desk because, again, when I was like, I was like, come on, Ben, with the 22 minutes, let's go at least an hour and a half, two, two hours. Come on, Ben, you're killing me. But it was it's beautiful. And, again, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Crystal, Miss, Miss, Miss Eddie, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, when I got the news, I told my team, I said, we're paying for everything. We'll make sure she has a lovely send off. And I'm, again, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry I, I didn't get to meet her. You know, I'm, I'm hurt just like you guys are hurt because after my sister and Kobe passed away, I said to myself, I got to start reaching out. Because I, I work, we all work, but I'm like, I'm like doing this, doing this. I'll call, call your mom. I'll call her tomorrow. Like, I just, I have to stop that. Like when I like from now on, when I, I I think of something or think of somebody, I must reach out. But listen, she's in she's in God's hands now. She's in a great place, and you know she in heaven. You know she's heaven. You know she's watching all of you, and you have a beautiful, wonderful family. And I can't wait to get you on that basketball court, Big Eddie. <laughs> We have a few minutes left, but I'd love to end with um, you, Crystal, just uh, thinking through how m more of us can hear about Lucy's story or any work that, um, yeah, anyone can get involved in with regards to, to her life. Oh, I know, <clears throat> sorry. I know that my brother is working on some things to um, preserve her legacy and so, um, I anticipate that we'll be releasing that information soon. Um, I think the biggest thing is just continuing to share her story, you know, continuing to share um, the documentary, just ensuring that people know who she is and not just people out in the public, like making sure that my own children understand like the impact that she has had on athletics and, and society. So we all have a um, responsibility to do that. And because of social media, we can ensure that her story continues to live on. Most definitely. Um, is there any last things that anyone wants to say before we log off? I just want to say thank you for having this discussion today. Thank you for all the people in the comments who have given great comments. And thank you, Ms. Crystal. And Eddie just agreed to my one-on-one -on -one game. So you hook that up and we'll definitely get that going. Thank you, Mr. Uh, ben Proudfoot. And thank you, Miss Lindsay. Uh, I appreciate you guys for having me involved, and I appreciate this panel today. Today is an important day. They got two playoff 
football games up. And they said, yo, we got a panel discussion on Miss Lucy. I said, I'll drop all that and I'll come, you know, spend 30, 45 minutes with you guys. So thank you. Looking forward to seeing you guys. And, uh, you know, the most important thing is that we get this information out. Nothing is really more important to me. Uh, if we win certain awards, cool. If we don't, I understand that. But the most important thing is that people who didn't know about the great Lucy Harris, they will know. And they will continue to know because social media is a powerful tool. And we're going to always make sure her name is loved and preserved. Thank you, Shaq. And I just wanted to also thank um, Crystal for making the time today. I, I know that, you know, I, I lost my dad a year and a half ago. And I know that this is a, a sacred time and I appreciate you taking the time. And I also wanted to, to thank uh, uh, Nana for doing a great job moderating today's conversation. And of course, um, to the Museum of Tolerance for, for hosting it. We appreciate it. And I hope everybody who hasn't gotten a chance gets a chance to, to watch this film and, and share it with uh, 10, 20, 50 of your friends. Get the word out there. And I'd also like to thank Ms. Libby Gift and Vince Johnson and Donnie Wilson and David Magadell. And I'm coming for you, Big Eddie Stewart. I'm coming for you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. There's a question in the chat about people accessing the film. Um, it's available online for people to see it. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for the generosity of your answers and uh, long live the queen. So thank you to the Museum of Tolerance for having us. Um, I appreciate the time and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Right. And long live the queen. Long live the queen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.